All right, I'm now due here, and I'm updating and doing a new talk to uh, this presentation on um, on uh, the FoundUp's open tokenization framework. So let's get going. Let me just go to full screen here. So here is Undaudu. He is the guy at the center of the mine, Zodiac. Um, and he is sitting on blocks. These 21 million blocks is what's known as Bitcoin. And it's the foundation of the fifth age, which is what the calendar is all about. It's about the transition of the fourth age into the fifth age. And um, to kind of go into a little background, the first stage was the evolution into the monk ape. The second age was our evolution from the monk ape into Homo Homo sapien on um, off the coast of um, Yemen. There's an island there. Uh, some 400,000 years ago, there was a whole lot. There was a whole peninsula. I mean, six million years ago, there was actually a peninsula there. 400,000 years ago, they had with cl with uh, global warming and everything else. Uh, water rose and broke it up into a series of islands. That's where we evolved. That's where the monk apes were trapped. They didn't have any predators and they evolved into semi-aquatic apes. The third age was the arrival of, of our, you know, our first family onto the coast of Africa. All the other Homo sapiens in the past were merely basically displaced earlier versions of the Ourobora. And the Ourobora was the monk ape. It's the sound they made, a warning sound, the Ourobora. The old um, um, awoke Shadu Mamas prophesized the Ourobora, the arrival of the Ourobora, and the ushering of the Ourobora, which is two different things. The Ourobora is the, our consumption, our business model consuming the planet, and um, Undaudu was a champion ushered in to bring about, you know, um, the end of the, you know, of the, um, of this monster, which they thought was Shigamatra, the last of the awoke mammoths. But in fact, it was themselves. And he was awoken into being like the first Buddha and all the incarnations of Buddha and Jesus and everything else and Undaudu are just manifestations of the same one, working, trying to come to the realization. And then on 2020, or 2012, was the, was the return, the awakening of Undaudu, and the, uh, the Mayan zodiac is, is, is just a, I think of it as a Rosetta Stone that explains that. And he's staring at Natsukaze, and the Natsukaze, the summer wind or the summer cold, is the coronavirus that um, he is staring at that's going to help transition and bring about this change. And change is happening. We are now entered into the fifth age or at the beginning of the fifth age. Um, and you can think of January 6th or February 8th as the transition. Um, and ultimately, this is where we're going prophesized some 5,250 years ago on Daudu. Around his head, coming out of his head, is what you call a blockchain. And you can see Ethereum and um, Elixir. I think that's uh, EOS, Cardano, um, and others. These are the foundation you know, um, tokens that came out. And on his back, staring out, is AI. That's 0202. 0202 signifies the uh, quantum computer, right? O2. The 2 represents the 0 and the 1 entangled together. So 020202, right? So it's not 010101. And that's Undaudu, an open beneficial AI, and the Bitcoin vault which I'm going to maybe talk about in this presentation. So everything right here kind of explains how the foundation is built on Bitcoin. It's the global reserve currency. You have the, you have the blockchain and this 
the and, and Bitcoin moving from the foundation to the vault. It's very important. How do we move Bitcoin from here that benefits a few to benefits everyone, right? And this tokenization framework that uh, I'm sharing, uh, you know, does that. So, so imagine that our to get to where we're going, we need to have a tokenization framework that's that's open, available to anyone and everybody that can easily create a token. So anyone can create, share Bitcoin-like token that lasts for 10 years. And it models on the hashtag rate, which that means is we have all the data for Bitcoin. We know what the value was. We know kind of how the market was. And we know basically based on the hash rate, which is basically the, the participation um, of the network, we know what um, the value, value of the valuation of these tokens will which means there's stability, that all these tokens become a form of stable token. DAO, um, we make it easy for people to share and swap these tokens, right? Um, use simple link or QR code. Um, and TrueSona has some of the technology, I think, that could be modeled, used, right? And do participation, mining. The more one participates, that's the mining. So the one more active, and that's hash rate, right? That ties into the first one. So on DAO do the three components of this this framework, and and understand Cardano is just the initial one. The, the, you know, think of the think of the technology that is developed, similar similar to you know Chainlink, where uh, or using Chainlink, that it's these tokens can happen and be developed on any blockchain. Um, Ethereum is problematic just because of the ECR and the cost of, you know, moving these tokens from one to another. Um, so obviously that's a, that's a problem, right? That's why Ethereum is not the token. But Cardano and some other ones where the, the cost of exchange should be extremely cheap uh, to be the network to happen. Um, so here is the framework and I want to talk about this this uh, I don't know if I can zoom in on this a little bit here okay this is my initial 2010 diagram right where I saw Bitcoin feeding these ideas and how this translates now is the tokens and trying to figure out how success equals validate idea so your idea is tokenized your thing is tokenized right um, and that thing builds a network of participation and that is the mining and as you move along basically what's happening is is these tokens gain value these value tokens that gain value gets translated to Bitcoin and this Bitcoin ultimately is being stored in what I call the Bitcoin vault it's autonomous so it's just a computer gobbling up Satoshi 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 using that fund to underwrite the value of these tokens creating stable tokens it's a very simple idea there is no hands in this this is completely autonomous driven by the noodle um, and ultimately think of that you know as these funds grow right as this as this bitcoin global reserve fund grows so does the um you know the pool of 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 money for launching new ideas so think of these tokens evolve and actually go into and become what I call an, um, a decentralized autonomous nonprofit organization right what I called back in 2010 open corp an open corp was a decentralized right entity that ethereum would rename you know on that so the idea is that we don't pick any sp specific blockchain, even though we are launching on Cardano because that's our test one. Um, the ability to tokenize anything, and it's powered by the communities that they are, you know, that they are from. Okay. Um, AI-driven valuation, and this is important because ultimately we don't have anyone controlling these tokens there is no entity or individual that has controls of the tokens that launch 
they actually just start a drip. They just start working like Bitcoin. And they pool. You can participate and get access to this pool. They get automatically attributed to your wallet. Or, you know, um, or, you know, they, they get allocated to, you know, to the, to the, uh, um, to the noodle to distribute. So there, it's, it's a closed system, completely decentralized without the control of any individual group, organization, nonprofit. There's no need of any of that. Once the system is set up, it works very similar like Bitcoin. Um, and the act of r running this application is like running a mining machine for it. There is no computational power involved. And the redistribution of wealth ultimately comes from the allocation of uh, tokens for fiat that goes into Satoshis that then go into this vault that then creates, um, becomes uh, the, um, um, what's the word? Uh, it's not the Bitcoin Global Reserve Fund. It becomes like the f the uh, underwriter, right? Like Fort Knox. So this fund becomes the f like um, what was it called back in the United States? We had uh, um, the currency underwritten by gold is a term, and I can't think of the term right with the word right now. Um, but when we had a whole system of underwritten currency by gold. The Bitcoin becomes the gold of, of the tokens that are in this network. You don't need Bitcoin for it. There's no Bitcoin changing or interacting. So there's no issue. It just becomes a store of value. That's it. So um, here's uh, explaining this mine zodiac prophecy as I, I talked about at the beginning. Kind of the story behind you know it, it right so you've got the cyberpunks down here these four that developed that coded they were NSA developers um, that worked with um, Hal Finney was one of them to launch Bitcoin and this is code this is this is keyboard you know this is code on monitors right here you got Brock Pierce smiling. Here's Brock smiling at the um, at the cyberpunks, and he's smiling because back then he was actually selling gold. In uh, 1987, he was actually selling gold on Ultima Online and other games, and he's smiling because he sees immediately the the value of what this represents. Here's Satoshi, ephemeral Satoshi, and hovering Bitcoin, right? Um, and the reason why he's there is because that's the outcome of the product. These are the coders. This is actually the outcome of the product. Hal Finney is who I believe Satoshi is. He received the first Bitcoin, and he, that's you know, the biggest indication is Hal. Um, staring at him is important, is, um, is what I call um, Eth Waldo. Eth Waldo, or Matthew N. Wright, was the CEO founder of Bitcoin Magazine. Um, he's gone MIA, he's disappeared, and ultimately, um, Mihao Lisi, which I'll talk about, and Vitalik were credited to his work. They had to give him credibility. They credited his work. His work, um, led to Ethereum, and you have to see him. He is glaring at Bitcoin. This is Bitcoin. He hates Satoshi and Bitcoin. He thinks he, he, and the reason for this is he gets blacklisted out of, uh, BitTalk, which is the Bitcoin, you know, which was the original uh, forums for Bitcoin, he gets blacklisted out of there, and you know he wants to devour. He his goal is to disrupt and replace Bitcoin. That's his goal, and hatred and anger is what you know what 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 drove it. Um, Across from here, let's go over here, and this is directly dichotomy to is part of his team is Mihao Lisi, and this is Mihao, and this is basically Skype, a window. You can look at the monitor here, the keyboard, the mouse, and they're connected, and that's how um, he turns his back on Undaudu, right? 
So Undao Du interacts with this individual. And next to him is Joe Lubin, Ethereum Joseph. Joe is the money behind, and his he, you know, he um, is ultimately the investment that makes Ethereum possible. Um, and the coder, the reason why Vitalik is was placed on, he was the only person I really didn't have any interaction with. They couldn't put Mihal Lisi because I was working with him, and, and my work was embodied in it, not the code, but the idea behind Ethereum and the work was based on FoundUp's open innovation framework, which I will talk about and share. Gavin Woods is the coder. He's important. He's a little squirrel, right? You see a squirrel tail. He did all the coding. He's very important in the development of Ethereum um, and what we later became the blockchain. Um, I believe now that this is Sailor, right? Michael Sailor right here. But it could be Pomp or Bax Kaiser, right? It could be multiple people, um, an embodiment of him. But what's important by Michael Sailor is in, two, in basically 20, 2020, late 2020, he started putting assets, his actually corporate assets, into Bitcoin, which then cr caused... Um, uh, Stripe or Swipe, I can't remember, I don't know what it, which, um, to do the same, and then he did another, and then which led to Elon Musk doing the same thing, so he's very important because he is now, instead of just financial institutions, corporations now are putting their cash into Bitcoin, because when you issue 20% of new money, so if you issue 20%, that's dilution. That's a 20% dilution. If 25% of all money was issued last year, another 20% is going to be issued this year out of our money and then flood into the system. That's dilution and ultimately the value, the buying power of their money. And these people in finance and corporations understand that. So they're starting to buy Bitcoin because they, they don't trust the dollar anymore, the Fed. Right? And the and um, that's just the reality of, of the situation. Here is Lewis and George. Their work is very important for, for DAOs uh, and decentralized autonomous organizations. That's the open corp that I shared with the founders, uh, that Undow Do shared with the founders of Ethereum, right, back in the day. Charles Hoskins, there's Cardano, and there's Charles, right? Um, good guy. I kind of uh, threw him under the bus in the past, and but Car Dano, a vehicle for Danos, decentralized autonomous nonprofit organizations. Um, their logo, if you look at their logo, right? Those are each one of those is you know little dots. That's that's DAOs, right? Each one is little dots, DAOs, and forming together the new thing. So Charles, oops, Charles um, gets the you know, um, gets the, uh, gets it, right? Um, and I believe this is future president of the United States, Andrew Yang. Um, I think he's going to run again, maybe. And Akira Hishigawa, which is the one who gave me, or gave on Daudu, number 19, the uh, Natsukaze, helped him complete this image, right, on it. And then uh, I actually believe this guy's already here. Um, and uh, anyway, so that's that. So this is the framework as part of a 31 slide rocket presentation that I shared with the founders of, of Ethereum back in 2011. Um, but this is the core crux of it where the they become these things, right? And this is the DAO. This is like when, when me Mi, Lisi says your work completes what we're doing, what he's referring to is this part right here, right? The DAO. Right? They didn't have the DAO. What the things happen. So um on there. These are just the timeline, right? Two thousand nine 
Undad Du has been doing startups quite a while. He sees a problem. Then the Occupy Wall Street happens in 2011, right? Um, and he reaches out. He kind of reaches out to the founders of Bitcoin Magazine. A few years later, they launch the Open Innovation, which is this is what the blockchain is. It's an open startup innovation framework, right? Um, walked away from funds from two different, you know, groups um, back in 2016 for an, for an ICO that would happen 2017, right? Two thousand nineteen he he goes to Osaka where he he throws three events, eighth, ninth, and tenth, right? And then um found its hemp launches in the Tampa region, then coronavirus hits. <laughs> and that gets and now Undadu's back in Japan. So uh the found ups framework. All right, creates, creates and holds 17 million tokens for each token. Pool, release them over 10 years. Stake their creators, collaborators, and, and ramping up. And I have um, uh, of on there, token bank. Goes to the token pool. It goes to the network. It goes to the creators, collaborators, and so on, right? And then... They both go to Bitcoin Vault. All the transactions, everything else goes to this vault, right? On there. There you go. I hope you enjoyed this. Kind of long. Um, it's my 2021 Undow Do.